So now that we're going to begin our exploration of gases, and we've already covered the basic properties in, cla in class about pressure, volume, temperature, and moles, and how they're all related, and then now we're going to get into a concept called the ideal gas law. So the ideal gas law governs how all gases behave. Now here's the problem, and, and you, you moan and you groan every time I do this in class to you, but you know that for every rule in chemistry there's always an exception. And the problem with gases are they vary radically from gas to gas. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to assume that all gases are ideal. That the, so that this way we can have one rule that applies to all of them. So what we're going to assume is that an ideal gas is a gas that behaves perfectly under all situations. If we always assume that it behaves perfectly, we don't have to get into like the little, uh, the little nitpicky stuff that happens with gases. So there's one formula that applies to all gases, and the formula is this, PV equals NRT. Sometimes you'll hear it called PIVNERT, sometimes you'll hear it called PERVNERT, whatever it happens to be. However you want to pronounce it, it's fine. But PV equals NRT. The P in the gas law refers to pressure. Now we're going to put things in terms of ATMs, and uh, ATM means atmospheres. We will get into more of like what an atmosphere is later in this unit, but for right now all you have to know is that it's going to be the unit will be ATM. Volume is a is in liters. Now sometimes they'll give it to you in milliliters or cubic centimeters. Sometimes, um, but we always have to convert it to liters. In every problem, we, I will always convert it for you so that you'll see it. T is our temperature. Now temperature is going to be in kelvins. Kelvins is always found by taking whatever the degree Celsius is and adding 273 to it. So we don't care about Fahrenheit in this unit. We're only going to care about Kelvin. I'm sorry. We don't care about F Fahrenheit in general in, in chemistry because Celsius is our SI unit. So we're going to always convert things into Kelvin. And again, anytime it pops up, I'll show you how to calculate it. R is what is called the gas law constant. It will always have the units of 0 0.0821. So you don't have to learn about memorizing it. It's going to be the same number, and I will give it to you on the equation sheet. And then finally is our moles. And I'm not going to define what moles are. You sh if you're not good at moles, we've got issues. OK, the last thing I want you to really focus in on and, and put a star next to this one and circle it is what's called STP. STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. And standard temperature and pressure is 0 degrees Celsius and 1.0 atmospheres. OK, so the best way to understand gas laws is to actually do them. So. Let's actually tackle all this stuff as we go. So it says a 1.25 gram sample of CO2 is contained in a 750 milliliter flask at 225 degrees Celsius. So here's what I do when I do any one of these problems. I list, I write my formula first. So I can see that I have a volume. So this is my volume. I can see I have a temperature. And I can see I have a mass. And mass is grams, but grams we know can be easily converted into moles. And it asks for pressure. So it wants a P. They give me a V. They give me a grams, which I'm going to turn into moles in a second. R we know is a constant, and I have a temperature. So I can easily see that I'm going to use PV equals NRT here. So the first thing you do in any one of these problems, I used to say is always write down our given, but now whenever we do the problems, because everything will have a formula, so the first thing we do is write down the formula. So we write down our formula, PV equals NRT. We know we're solving for P, so we're just going to put P right in there as P. Now volume. Now, I told you before volume is in liters. To get from milliliters to liters, you divide by 1,000. And I plug it right into my formula as I go. Now I need to go to moles. Well, I know that to convert from grams to moles, I divide by the weight from the periodic table. So I add up one carbon, two oxygens, and I get 44.01 grams. Now I need to convert that to moles. So I turn on my handy dandy calculator, and I say, OK, 1.25 divided by 44.01 equals 0 0.0284. Exact sig figs are not important here because this is just 
work. I only care about sig figs in my final answer, and I'll, show, I'll remind you how to get the sig figs. R is po always 0 0.0821, and this is where prior planning prevents poor performance, because I obviously did not leave myself enough room over there. Okay, and then temperature, as I told you, I will always remind you, is 22.5 plus 273, which would be 295.5. Go back to my handy dandy calculator. Now, luckily, my moles is already up there, so I'm going to hit times right away, 0 0.0821 times 295.5, and I hit enter. Perfect. Now, that's everything on the right, the NRT. Now, I'm going to divide by everything that's on the left, and so I divided that by 0.75, and so the pressure is 0.919. So, my P comes out to be 0.919. 919. Nine. Now I double check my sig figs. The grams has one, two, three significant figures. The volume has one, two, three, four significant figures. Now the only one that will mess you up is temperature. Never go by the degrees Celsius to do sig figs. Always go by the Kelvin number. And my Kelvin number has four sig figs, so therefore I'm going to keep my answer in three sig figs because the smallest one was in three sig figs. So my answer comes out to be 0.919. Okay, fairly straightforward. I have five variables. They gave me four of them. I just plug and chug. Let's do one more together. Example number two. What volume will 50 grams of ammonia gas, NH3, occupy at a temperature of zero degrees Celsius and a pressure of one atmosphere? So again, I list off. I know I'm going to be using PV equals NRT. I list off what I know. My pressure is 1.0 atmospheres. My volume, it says what volume. So I know I'm solving for volume. My N is going to be converted from this 50 grams here. Because remember, grams is going to get turned into moles. R is a constant. And then I've got my temperature. And my temperature is right here. And of course, we know that temperature is going to get added to 273 to make sure that it's in kelvins. So this will be equal to exactly 273. So let's do our mole conversion. Oops. 50 grams of ammonia, NH3. How do I know what ammonia is? It gave it to me in the problem. It is right here. One mole goes on the top. The weight from the periodic table goes on the bottom. And you're like, Mr. Siegel, how do you remember that so easily without looking it up? I'm just that good. So I take, I go to my handy dandy calculator. I clear out what was there before, and I take 50 divided by 17.04, and I get 2.93. So now I just plug everything into my formula. Pressure is 1, V is what I'm solving for, N is 2.93, R is 0 0.0821, and my temperature is 273 solve. So I realized I didn't do this before, but I'm going to go backwards and show it in, in stepwise. So obviously I'm going to take everything that's on the top, I'm sorry, everything that's on the right, and I'm going to divide it by what's connected to the variable, which is on the left. Divided it by my pressure, which is 1.0. That's actually how I solved the problem last time. I don't know if some of you have math, you know, like you need to see the math all out. So that's how I would solve for the volume. Again, I'm going to slide this over here this time. Um, so I have everything laid out. My moles is already there. So I get times 0 0.0821 times 273 equals. I have to divide it by 1, but obviously I'm not going to do that in the calculator because any number divided by 1 is 1, duh, equals 65.7. Okay, three sig figs because we've got three significant figures here. Oh, I'm sorry, two sig figs because we've got two significant figures there. So this is actually going to turn into 66. And again, it's a volume, and volumes are always going to be in liters when we do PV equals NRT. Okay, and that's how you solve PV equals NRT problems. Very straightforward, very simple form, and it'll work with.